Protein allergies in pets are more common than you might think. At times, a protein allergy can show itself by affecting your pet's skin, while other times it could show itself by affecting their GI tract. It's pretty obvious that there's something going on when you constantly see your pet scratching, losing fur, or having chronic diarrhea. But it may not always be this severe. So how can you tell if your pet has a protein allergy? Let's go over how to tell if your pet is allergic to a specific protein and how you can pinpoint what it is that's causing a reaction. So how can you tell if your pet has a protein allergy in the first place? Well, first of all, if you're feeding a homemade diet, you wanna make sure that it's balanced. An imbalanced diet that's lacking essential nutrients could very well be the cause of skin issues or GI upset. So you first wanna make sure the diet is nutritionally balanced. A diet low in omega-3s, vitamin E, and iodine in particular can lead to itchy skin. If you've established there's no nutritional imbalances, it's time to take a closer look. Is the itching and fur loss consistent or does it come in waves? If it comes in waves, is it following along with seasonal changes? If so, this could definitely be more environmental. Or maybe it's more GI related and they seem to have diarrhea or loose stool no matter what you try. If the consistent scratching, hair loss, or frequent diarrhea sounds like your pet, this definitely sounds like it could be food related. But what exactly could they be allergic to? This is where the elimination diet comes in. This process will take some time, but it's very effective in pinpointing the culprit. Let's go over the steps using Matsu as an example. To begin, the first major step is to feed a diet of one single animal protein for about six weeks. This needs to be a novel protein that your pet either hasn't had before or at least something other than chicken, beef, or potentially pork, as these are foods that often cause a reaction in pets. Common proteins to feed during an elimination diet are rabbit, duck, turkey, lamb, goat, bison, and venison. For those who feed kibble or canned food, look for these proteins on the label. It may take some time searching, but they're definitely out there. Since Matsu is fed a raw diet, I need to start looking for these proteins around local grocery stores and markets. Let's say I found some ground bison to put Matsu on. I'm super excited that I found a novel muscle meat protein, but because I'm making a homemade diet, I still need to add raw meaty bones, liver, and at least one other secreting organ meat. The problem now is where do I find bison organs? On top of this, there's no way I could feed bison bones. They're too dense. What do I do now? If you can't find muscle meat, bones, and organs from one of these novel proteins, what you should do instead to make life easier is get a PMR grind, which is ground bone, muscle meat, and at least one secreting organ of that animal ground together. I suggest Viva Raw, My Pet Carnivore, Raw Feeding Miami, Solely Raw, or Top Quality Dog Food. Now, during this six week period, you cannot give any treats, nor can you add meal additions like kefir, joint supplements, or eggs. Only feed the single animal protein. For those feeding a commercial food, be sure to read the ingredients label carefully because many foods have other proteins mixed in. For an elimination diet, not even fat from another animal can be an ingredient. You also may face additional challenges if your pet is allergic to the starches in the kibble or canned food. This is why I always advocate for a balanced fresh food diet. If you're a raw feeder, you've probably noticed by now that this diet isn't balanced. This six to 12 weeks of an unbalanced diet isn't going to harm your adult pet. But if you have a puppy or a kitten, you'll need a handful of synthetic nutrients to add to the meal during this time period because they can't synthesize missing nutrients in their body like adults can. Well, it looks like Matsu's six weeks on his novel protein is up. Now the next step is to slowly introduce one single new protein at a time, giving each a good two to three week trial. For Matsu, I'm incorporating a small amount of beef and I'll be monitoring his body closely for the next week. For owners who feed commercial food, you can slowly incorporate another protein of the same brand. If there's a reaction, you found the culprit to at least one food. Do the same with the whole foods that you use to balance, as well as any toppers that you add to the meal like kefir, powders, or eggs. The process can be strenuous, but it's the best way to pinpoint a food that causes a reaction. When it comes to feeding raw, you can certainly find some interesting exotic proteins if you look hard enough. But are there meats out there that are actually dangerous to feed your pet? Find out in this video.